in Ulysses Part 2, Episode 11, The Odyssey, Sirens. It's almost 4 p.m. at the bar of the Ormond Hotel. Two barmaids watch the viceregal cavalcade go by and gossip. Simon Daedalus enters the bar, followed by Lenahan. Outside, Bloom passes by a shop and thinks about Molly's date with Boylan. He decides to buy paper to write his secret correspondent, Martha. Back in the bar, Lenahan tells Simon he brings greetings from his son, Stephen. Lenahan tells Simon about going for drinks with Stephen, remembering their talk in the newspaper office. Blazes Boylan mm. enters the bar. Bloom meets his friend Richie in the street, and they decide to dine at the bar of the Ormond Hotel. The clock strikes four, and Boylan announces he must go, and Lenahan leaves with him. Ben Dollard plays a song on the piano, and then Father Cowley, Ben, and Simon Dedalus talk about Molly. Dedalus makes a snarky comment about how she sleeps around. Bloom recalls his conversation that morning with Molly, while he and Richie eat. After some cajoling, Simon sings an aria from the opera, Martha. What a coincidence! Bloom was just thinking about writing to Martha, and he decides to write her right there in the bar. He thinks about the fact that music can be reduced to mathematical mm. relationships. If Molly can cheat, he can too. He writes a flirtatious letter, then adds the sad postscript, I am so lonely. Bloom thinks about music and playing a woman like a flute before he leaves. He feels gassy, and as a loud tram goes by, Bloom takes the opportunity to pass gas as he thinks of Robert Emmett's final words. The Sirens episode experiments with sound and music, an art intimately bound up with time. Joyce here seems to be trying to see how far words can be reduced to sounds before they lose all sense and meaning. In the Odyssey, Odysseus and his men were tempted by the Sirens, beautiful female creatures whose singing lured sailors to their deaths. This episode begins with sentence fragments that act like a musical overture as words are assembled for their sound patterns, and characters' voices merge with the narrators. Molly's date with Boylan hangs over the episode. Bloom recalls her words, not yet, at four. It's possible Bloom somehow enjoys Molly's infidelity. As with his roundabout gift of Sweets of Sin, Bloom may see himself as the endpoint for all Molly's sexual experiments and dalliances.